Just a quick note to let you know that we are recording this session and we can certainly send it out afterwards if anybody would require it. Uh, my name is Christine Walker and I am the director of the Chef School and today we'll also be, also be supporting the School of Hospitality in this wonderful presentation. Thank you for taking the time this morning to be with us. We appreciate it. We know everybody's time is very valuable and especially on this beautiful sunny day. I'm sure lots of people are looking forward to getting out and enjoying it. We're going to go through a wonderful presentation for you today. We'll go through all of the programs. Um, feel free to ask any questions that you like. If you have never used this platform before, on the very right hand side at the bottom, you'll see a little pink area with some arrows. If you click on those arrows, you'll be able to see that there are some bubbles at the bottom and the very left hand bubble is a chat bubble. So if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to enter them in the chat section and either one of our amazing uh, staff from the Le learning support services area, the student, sorry, the student support services area will answer the question immediately. And if we can't answer the question immediately, then at the end, when we do a question and answer period, we will get back to that question and answer it live. So feel free to plot in as many questions as you want in that section. And we'll make sure by the end of this presentation, we've answered them for you. So, as I said, today we're going to go, this is the Centre for Hospitality and Culinary Arts. And in this division, we actually have two separate uh, divisions. One is the Chef School and one is the School for Hospitality and Tourism. Together we're under one umbrella, but they're actually two different areas. So we're going to go through uh, the hospitality program and we have an amazing faculty member here that's going to give you an overview of all the courses. And then we have a chef, the chef school programs and myself and one of our amazing uh, baking and pastry faculty will go through the programs there. We'll also talk about some of the other uh, services that we have and fast ha fantastic events that we do. And of course, what I'm sure you really want to understand is what the fall will look like. So we'll make sure we go through that as well. So if you can go to the next slide, please. So today we have uh, several people with us and uh, I think I'll, today I'll just allow everybody to introduce themselves when we get to uh, that slide. But as you can see, besides myself, we have some great people from the Supports uh, Learning Services Department and we have some faculty. And today we're even uh, blessed with somebody from the International Business Development and Officer Nadelia. Next slide, please. So this is a photo of the front of the building of 300 Adelaide Street on the left hand side and the one on the right is our 250, 215 King uh, location where the chef's house is and our amazing wine labs and uh, some other areas which we'll go through shortly. The building is a little quiet at the moment, we aren't offering any classes, but it is busy with faculty as they are working on videos in both the chef school and hospitality in order to provide a great experience in the fall. We are one of the leading culinary and hospitality schools in Canada, and in fact, the largest, and often compared to some of the really big universities in the United States. We offer general, historically, we have lots of amazing chefs and sommeliers and people from hospitality come and visit and speak to our students. We are planning on still having those opportunities in the fall, but they'll be online. Uh, we have over 21,000 alumni. I'm sure it's quite higher than that by this uh, time. And uh, we often get our alumni to come in and speak to our students so they can speak about their past experiences and give advice on how to move forward for, with your careers. Next slide, please. So we have two buildings. Uh, we have three food outlets, which is our Chefs on the Run. That's where student, uh, students and the public can purchase uh, ready-made items that have been made by our culinary students. The cafe, which is in our 300 Adelaide building and the Chef's House Restaurant, which is at 215, 215 King. Uh, we have over 27 labs and interactive spaces, including auditoriums, butchery classes, bake labs, and as you can see, a whole list there. We have an incredible wine labs and simulation theaters and mixology lab as well. And as I mentioned that uh, this is located at 300 Adelaide. If you're at the college though, you actually can have your classes in one of four or five different buildings. So it gets a little complicated, but the schedules are quite clear as to which room you would need to go to. 
If you would like to use social media, you'll see our hashtags there. So feel free to take a picture of those so that in the future, you'll be able to share some of the work that you're doing. Or if you even want to follow them now, um, because all of our classes are online, I think you'll find, especially on Instagram, uh, a lot of our students are sharing their experiences online. So be able to see what they're doing now. Next slide, please. These are just some photos. They don't do the building justice, I assure you, because in person they look even more spectacular. Uh, in the chef school here, the top left one, this is the hospitality, uh, does lots of programming in this space. And when it's not being used for programs, we have lots of tables set up for students to be able to enjoy their lunches there or interactive spaces so that they can enjoy quality time with their fellow classmates. On the top right is our large quantity kitchen and uh, that has been set up to be able to do demonstrations, but also for students to cook and a variety of international as well. We have tandoori ovens and woks and all sorts of international equipment to be able to offer a wide variety of curriculum. The uh, bottom right there is our cafe, which is run entirely by students uh, in that are in their um, second year. Okay, next slide. Well, one of the advantages of George Brown College is that we're right downtown and the Chef's House, which is our student run uh, restaurant, both hospitality students and culinary students have spent some time in this restaurant. And one of the advantages being right downtown is we're in competition with the community around us. And uh, I guarantee you that what we are able to provide in that restaurant is equal to the restaurants that are around us. Up on the second floor, you can see this where all the lights are. That's our simulation uh, lab. And so we can have regular classes in there, but we can also host a variety of events, uh, student run events and also um, events for the industry. And then on the fourth, uh, third floor is a wine lab, which is the bottom right picture that you can see right now. And the wine theater was just built a couple of years ago. It's state of the art. Uh, it can be divided into smaller intimate classrooms or a classroom up for, for 48 students. On the top right, that is our uh, food and innovation research studio. And that's uh, first. And in that space, students who are interested in product development and recipe testing are able to do their externship there. But we also work with industry uh, and a lot of the times industry comes to us when they have a problem, whether it's being making their product shelf stable or being able to preserve their products. And so we work a lot with industry to solve some of their common issues that allows them to scale up and, and to make their businesses better. And I'm sorry, these pictures don't really do our building justice, but uh, really, I've been to all the chef schools and I can tell you that uh, ours is really, really state of the art. This picture here on the left is actually the patio on the second floor uh, at 200 King Street. And it's actually the rooftop garden for the chef school. And even this year, even though we're closed, we still opened it um, and planted uh, 57 boxes of vegetables, which we will be donating. They're just starting to come and season all of it now. We are also an ocean-wise community partner, and that simply means that we're committed to buying food that's this, this seafood uh, that is sustainable. And uh, in all of our programs, we do have sustainability outcomes. So when you're in uh, the college, you will make we will make sure that you understand sustainability by the time you graduate. We have lots of guests that come to the college. These are just uh, four shots, but uh, one of our prides is because of the amount of alumni and the size of our colleges that we have connections worldwide. And so we're able to provide students with numerous opportunities to meet people that can give them the opportunity to provide connections and um, hopefully job opportunities for the future. So the biggest question we're always asked in our discovery days is why would you choose George Brown um, over other colleges? And I'm sure everybody on this call is doing their due diligence and visit the colleges, even if it is on an online capacity at the moment. And I think, you know, I've been at George Brown College for 15 years uh, in both a professor capacity and uh, in administration. And I've worked at other colleges as well. And the reality is all colleges need to meet uh, ministry set uh, program outcomes. So no matter which college you go to, when you graduate, you should be competent in the credential that you received. But I think one of the things that really sets George Brown apart is the faculty. All of our faculty uh, are really to have demonstrated commitment and experience in the industry. So they've all worked in the industry in which they're teaching. But also um, they have connections still. 
And, you know, whether it's our full-time faculty or our part-time faculty, the experience that you receive from the staff, I feel, are better uh, than other colleges. I also think that the support team that we have at George Brown College is also um, really important because without that team, you aren't, it's, it makes it so much more difficult for students to be successful. And I can tell you, especially since we've been online and um, it's become more apparent than ever before that we are so committed to students. We respond to every single issue and we resolve them very quickly. And I think that, you know, that's one of the advantages to a large school is that we have the team in order to support the students in a timely manner. I think also, obviously, our facilities, which might not be relevant for the fall, but, you know, once you get into the college, the facilities at George Brown are phenomenal, which you will uh, get to experience at some point, we're hoping. And also um, our industry connections, our size being downtown Toronto is uh, important because it gives us the opportunity to have more connections, not just in Toronto, but Ontario and quite frankly, all over the world. So we have students that do externships all over the world. And that's that's because we have those connections to make that happen. We offer incredible industry networking events, mentorship programs. Our residence is just a short 15 minute walk away from the college. And uh, we offer lots of pathways from the program that you're in to something else that you might be interested in, which we'll go through in a little while. We will also talk about our international study tours uh, a little bit later. So the big question is, what is the fall going to look like? And uh, you will see that the fall will be online. And I think all of the programs should have been updated by now on the college website first semester will be online. We don't know what January looks like yet. So we are planning for both scenarios, fully in class and fully online. Uh, actually, I guess three scenarios and partially in class and partially online. So we're currently working on that, but your first semester is going to be fully online. When you're going to the other colleges, make sure you ask them uh, how they're planning on delivering their semester. And I think two really important questions to ask other colleges for if you're looking at the chef school and hospitality as well, is are they still delivering 100% of the content uh, that they would have been delivering in class? And if you're in culinary, are you still cooking? Because there are some colleges that are taking students but will not be requiring them to cook at all. And then there are other colleges that are taking students but have reduced the amount of time that they're going to be cooking. So one of the things that George Brown College we're proud of is that uh, we spent a numerous amount of hours this summer developing curriculum and making sure that you're still going to receive the same uh, education, same level of education, and same number of hours that you would have when you were in class. We'll go through what the online looks like with each faculty when we get into the individual, individual programs. But as I said before, if you have questions to think of right now, feel free to put them in the chat box and we'll make sure we come to them a bit later. So one of the things that you need to think about when you're coming to George Brown is how long do you plan on spending here? We have courses in, uh, sorry, programs in both the chef school and the hospitality school that are one year of length, uh, which are considered certificates. And then we have two year diplomas. We have postgraduate programs in both schools as well. And in both schools, we also have a four years honors degree. So one of the, the, the first thing you need to think about is how long do you want to spend? But also consider what kind of pathways you might like to do afterwards. So there are programs where you can do the certificate and move straight into the second year without any additional classes. There are programs where you can do the two-year diploma and then move into the honors degree, if you have a bridge program. You can do a one-year certificate, get some industry experience, and then do our postgraduate certificates. So once you're in the college, just know that you have lots of opportunities to uh, move into other programs because once you're here, you're going to find your, what you learn is going to give you the opportunity to maybe think of different pathways that you might want for a career. So I think that the Center for Hospitality and Culinary Arts has done a really fantastic job in providing pathways for students uh, while they're here. I'm going to pass this slide over to Doreen now. Thank you, Christine. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Oh, I'm not on camera for some reason. Can you hear me? 
Yep, we can. Okay. Uh, so my name is Doreen Pashkoff. I'm one of the co-op and externship coordinators at the Center of Hospitality and Culinary Arts. And our graduates work in various industries. These represent a very diverse range of companies and organizations within the culinary and hospitality field, such as such as restaurants, hotels, resorts, personal chefs, test kitchens, food magazines and bloggers, brand ambassadors, private clubs and golf courses, catering and banquet companies, product consulting and development, wine and spirits agencies, conference and event management, nutrition and wellness centers, retirement residences, travel agencies, seasonal food service operations, academia, and much more. We provide many opportunities for our culinary and hospitality students to connect with employers through many ways, through our career fair, our networking events, our classroom visits, and presentations from many of the industries listed and represented here. In fact, it becomes full circle when many of our graduates become employers for our current students. Next slide, please. Good, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Doreen. My name is Doris McKillen Bradley, and I'm a faculty member with the School of Hospitality Tour, um, uh, Tourism Management. And I'm here to talk to you about the programs that we offer uh, through uh, the School of Hospitality. Um, the first program, a hospitality certificate program is a one-year program suited for students that are looking for an introduction to the industry but haven't quite made up their mind. The beauty about this program is that it is a general overview uh, including catering, food and beverage management, hotel management, event management, and students have the opportunity to decide at a later date if they want to uh, transfer over to a diploma program. So it's a great um, uh, entry level certificate and it actually gives you fantastic um, foray into uh, the industry. It's quite uh, um, a practical course. And, and I have to say, it also includes culinary skills. So if, you're, if you've never cooked before and you aren't exposed to the vocabulary, um, we will teach that. Okay, next, next uh, slide, please. The hospitality diploma program is broken into um, several segments. Uh, tourism hospitality management, which has a focus on the tourism industry. Graduates from this program uh, get placed in um, wellness centers, private clubs, uh, tourism and travel companies, government agencies. It's a dynamic program because it gives you a global perspective of the uh, tourism and hospitality um, services that we have around the world. Um, we have a focus on local. There's a fantastic um, heritage tourism course that actually takes you through the history and where we are today and really ex uh, opens your, your mind to um, how vast the industry really is. The special event management program um, helps you build your skills in delivering live events and virtual events. So this program is also a two-year program and the dynamic piece in this program is the capstone. The capstone project is actually a live project that um, an event planner um, would execute. You execute this in teams. The expectation is that it's public and the expectation is that um, you raise funds for either student bursaries or charity. Now, I know I said it's live. So this year we shifted and what we did, we had our students bid 
for the Ontario Wine Awards 2021. So one of our teams actually made the, um, the winning bid and they're going to be executing their ideas, their budgets and uh, their volunteer management. Now, I know they're going to be graduates by 2021, but our students are invited back to execute the event. So our partnerships are that strong that we can actually uh, place a virtual event uh, into motion. The food and beverage management program is designed for individuals that uh, are going to go into marketing, sales, HR management, uh, finance, consulting, front of house management um, in, uh, in a, a food and beverage um, uh, outlet. And, you know, do you realize Toronto itself has 9,000 restaurants and they are continuously looking for individuals um, that have leadership skills and we help our students develop these leadership skills. The capstone project for the food and beverage management is a takeover, but it's virtual and it was virtual before we went virtual. So we give students um, a budget and you play a game a virtual game but it's serious it's competitive and it is a great piece of work that you can uh, um, be proud of when you graduate and talk about it while when you interview and finally the the hotel operations management is uh, diploma is a two-year diploma and it is um, uh, dynamic in the fact that you're doing hotel simulation. Now that's not the only thing that you learn, hotel, hotel, hotel. You also learn about wines and beers and cocktails, human resource management, liability and risk management, social media uh, marketing. So there's a lot of components to being a hotel um, management uh, graduate. There are over 230 hotels in Toronto. That results in 38,000 uh, hotel rooms, but there are also other businesses that are lodging based. For example, Airbnb, one of our graduates is a district manager for a group of Airbnb properties. And um, you know, this person did not expect that their career was going to go this way, but they're really at the leading edge of private um, lodging. So we also give skills um, to develop uh, your ideas of being an entrepreneur or consultant because a lot of our students uh, graduate with this. Next screen, please. Now, bridging from the diploma is an option. So just like you can bridge from a certificate to a diploma, you can bridge from a diploma to a degree. In order to consider that, students need to maintain a, an average of 2.7 uh, and then consider bridging into the degree. So what will happen is at the end of your two-year program, you apply to get into the degree and providing you have a 2.7 GPA average you bridge into courses that are delivered over 15 weeks that have uh, required to be learned at a higher level and in September you will bridge into the stream of uh, students uh, which is uh, year three uh, I think it's semester six. So you have a really great opportunity to graduate in four years and one semester with both a, a diploma and a degree. Very valuable. We find a lot of students take this pathway uh, because it's important if you're going to um, 
consider working at a management or in a leadership role. Now, some of our students right now are currently leading hotels in Dubai. They are owning their own um, restaurants. Uh, they are uh, managing in HR departments for big corporations. And they are graduates of the Ho hospitality degree program. Um, this degree program is as competitive as a, a degree program, let's say from Guelph University or Brock University university and you know later on in life eventually maybe you might consider a master's which you'll need a degree to bridge into um, I had mentioned the 2.7 GPA grade point average if you don't maintain a 2.7 GPA there are opportunities to upgrade so um, you know keep it at top of mind but know that if you don't have the 2.7 it's not the end of the line we can guide you how to uh, how to uh, pull up your GPA and get into uh, the, the the next uh, the next pathway of your studies next slide please now we do have hospitality postgraduate program uh, which is the um, advanced wine and beverage business management program now this is a program that is designed for students that want to focus in the multi-billion dollar industry um, and want to um, you know, work as potentially an importer um, a brand ambassador, um, a portfolio manager, um, possibly a, con a financial consultant in this uh, in this field. The course, the program is a year and a half with a dynamic capstone abroad. Now we didn't run the capstone in um, other countries, but. What we did, we connected students with industry leaders that you would not necessarily be exposed to if you were um, uh, an individual looking to get into this field. Now, our students have the opportunity to travel to um, wineries, including Boulanger in, in Champagne, uh, Domaine Chanson, Père des Filles in Burgundy, um, Antonori in Tuscany. Now, if you don't know these names, um, they're benchmark uh, uh, producers, global benchmark producers, and not you wouldn't necessarily be exposed to some of these producers. Now, not only do you graduate with our um, diploma, you will graduate with industry credential. The Prudum Beer Certification Levels 1 and 2 is part of this, and the Wine and Spirit Education Trust Certification 2 and 3 is also part of this. Uh, we have dynamic professors that teach the, the, the um, cocktail industry. Um, I personally teach uh, strategic beverage marketing. Our students take over products and they rebrand and re market products and then they present their business plans to companies that have partnered with us so it's real education with real results and regardless if it's delivered online or face to face the outcomes are exactly the same uh, that we would get if we were in the classroom okay next uh, slide okay over to you Doreen Hi, so actually I'm going to talk uh, back to Christina again here um, and then I will be speaking with Chef uh, David Heyman who is one of our baking and pastry faculty. So Chef, I'll just talk about the culinary skills and then I'll pass it off to you. Uh, so these are our two uh, one-year certificate programs. The um, We need to update the slide slightly so if you could just make a note of that. The culinary skills program actually runs in September and January and May. But the baking and pastry pre and pre program only runs in January. Uh, so in the culinary skills program, uh, this is actually the same, this is the same as the first year of our diploma, which we'll be talking about in a minute. Uh, it is about 50% practical and 50% um, theoretical. 
In the first semester, we really focus on basic fundamental culinary skills, so knife skills and introduction to ingredients and um, basic cooking techniques as well. You will also, uh, so you'll be taking, I should say, in this fall, you'll be taking foundations, which is a seven-week class. That's the practical class you'll be doing online. And essentials, which is a seven-week class as well, which will also be online. Um, but there are two other courses which you'll see on the website, which are butchery and cafe production. We have actually deferred those two labs until January. We would rather teach those two labs in class because the butchery techniques are pretty hard for us to not only teach but evaluate online and it's expensive for students to buy those ingredients. And then the cafe production is large quantity cooking and so we certainly don't want students making 40 portions of a Thai curry when they're at home. So in the fall you'll just be doing foundations and essentials and then um, depending on which course you're in you'll also be taking baking and pastry for cooks online as well. So I see there are some questions in the in the chat box about what does online look like for culinary and Chef Heyman can talk about pastry. But we have spent this entire summer developing individual skills videos so that you're able to see the individual skills in a video. And the classes are still taught by a faculty member, chef faculty. And so you'll have a demonstration class in which you'll spend with the faculty going over the recipes, looking at the skills videos, answering questions. And then you'll go on your own and you'll make the vid you'll make the recipes that are in that um, uh, class. And uh, but there'll still be an opportunity for you to reach out to the faculty member and have questions. You know, if you have questions of what you're doing and answers for the most part, I don't think faculty are expecting you to bake and cook exactly in the class that you're that the time is at, because we know that everyone's got uh, competing timetables, but you'll have a deadline by which that actual recipe is due. You, if you go on to the website, you will see a link uh, that will give you the total list of ingredients, uh, sorry, a list of equipment that you need, and we will be providing you the list of ingredients that you need. In culinary, we've made a lot of effort to make sure that we're providing you with uh, alternatives to ingredients. This won't be such an issue for the first year um, because it's carrot, celery, onion, garlic, you know, very basic ingredients that you can find in any grocery store. But uh, in our second year, which we're doing online right now, sometimes there are more expensive items like a rabbit, for example. And so our faculty have given alternatives. If a student can't find a rabbit or it's too expensive, we tell them how they can meet the same outcomes using, say, a chicken. Um, so we'll be doing that in the fall as well. Uh, so in generally in your tuition, you are charged for material fees. And those material fees are costs that we use that, to buy the food for you in the labs. Uh, but in the fall, we will be refunding, either refunding or depending if we can actually get it organized on time, it will be removed from your um, tuition so that you're not paying for the food at the college, but you will be responsible for paying for the food yourself. So either it'll be refunded or it will be removed from your actual tuition and we will communicate um, the way that we've managed to organize it for the fall as soon as we've got that figured out. Uh, you'll also have classes like food and beverage cost control, you have your communications class, your English, your college English and your college math classes as well. Uh, and then in the second semester right now the plan is that you'll be taking those classes in um, the college. We are in the fall uh, having some labs in the college. There'll be classes of 12 instead of our usual 24. Uh, and the classes that'll be in the college in the fall are specifically for students who will be graduating in December. So for the chef culinary skills certificate, we're online in the fall, but the plan will be that you will be doing all of your labs in class in the January term. Chef Hamid, did you want to talk about the baking pre-employment program? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everybody. I'm um, Chef David Heyman. Uh, so I'm a full-time professor in the Baking and Pastry Arts program. Um, so uh, just like uh, Christine explained in the uh, on the culinary side of things, in the Baking and Pastry Arts program, we also have um, a one-year certificate program, which is the, our H108, and um, not, not dissimilar from the culinary program. In the one-year program, um, the very beginning, we're focusing on kind of all the core skills, the basics. Um, we start with doing a seven-week bread program, so we learn the ins and the outs of bread and 
it's at a really good pace, I feel, so that also um, equally important is we start introducing kind of professionalism in the kitchen and um, all the other aspects of um, kind of how to work in our industry, the language, um, things like that. Um, after the breads we work, we move into um, kind of a broader general pastry um, uh, skills. So we look at, um, we do cookies, we introduce pies and tarts and things like that. And it's really, really hands-on and skills-based. Um, second semester, we move more into um, cakes. We do introduction to vinoiserie, which is like uh, laminated pastries. Uh, we do an introduction to chocolate. So really the way I, I often explain the H108 program is um, it's kind of a broad stroke overview of all kind of the core disciplines in the pastry arts. So as um, anyone who's probably interested in joining us in the pastry arts program um, knows, is we have a, we have a couple very specific disciplines. Um, and in, a, in the H108 one year program, what we're really looking at is, is kind of a, a little gentle introduction to all of them. And usually what we find is by the end of second semester, most of our students tend to start to take a leaning towards you know, this discipline or that discipline. And, um, and then we kind of exploit um, your, uh, the, the disciplines that you're most interested in when we move into the two-year program. Um, I guess also, like Christine mentioned, uh, in our culinary program, um, we spent a lot of time and really, really poured our hearts into um, understanding how to best deliver um, content like this online for the practical aspects of creating um, creating material to be then um, kind of judged and commented on and worked with with the students. Um, so we were extremely flexible. I would say that um, a huge amount of our time actually was was spent on kind of trying to visualize and work through the logistics of what equipment students are going to have at, um, on hand at home. Uh, what are realities of sourcing specific ingredients? Um, as Christine mentioned, in the second year of the culinary program, there's some speciality ingredients that aren't so hard to find. Um, it's probably not hard for most of you to imagine that within the realm of the pastry arts, we have a lot of kind of professional grade specific ingredients. Um, so we did the absolute best we could to offer flexibility um, in the actual course material itself. And our goal really in the pastry side was our whole thing was to maximize inclusion. So we always have a great number of students coming from all over the world, whether it's India, China, Korea, Vietnam. Um, and we wanted to, to really make sure that we weren't shortchanging anybody. So um, we spent a lot of time also on the front end uh, preparing options and shopping options for all the for all the different labs and really the ingredient sourcing so if you happen to live in Canada or America and you have access to Amazon it's not actually difficult to source a lot of the the more speciality ingredients and things like that whereas um, maybe in some other countries you know it's it's difficult to find things we all just everywhere has different things so we did our best to kind of have tiered options so that everyone can be included. Um, otherwise, apart from the practical, we also do um, theoretical uh, studies that go hand in hand, actually, on the pastry side of things. Generally speaking, whatever we're um, studying practically in our lab environments, we're also studying uh, simultaneously at, at a theoretical level. Um, so the theory and the practical kind of flow in and out of the classroom together. And um, as one of the professors that actually teaches both the practical and the theory, it's a really, really good way to learn because you're kind of obviously um, exercising and practicing on the one hand physically, and then at the same time, we're, we're complementing that with like, um, comes some sort of deeper knowledge and theoretical understanding of the principles that we're applying. Um, other than that, we also do job preparation. So even if you do come into the one year program, uh, we do do a course in the second semester that really helps, um, I think, give the students the confidence to go out and apply for good jobs um, in the field directly coming out of the H-108 program. Um, 
it uh, we work closely. We don't do an externship, but the student has a vast, uh, the school has a vast amount of resources to assist all of our students, um, international and domestic, in seeking employment uh, post graduation. And if I'm not I don't think I'm incorrect. You actually get to use those services for life after you finish uh, graduating at George Brown, or at least for several years. So um, in that sense, the H-108 program is good. I often recommend it for people who are perhaps um, not 100% sure whether this is the industry they want to go in, they want to have a little bit of a feel for it, and or people who specifically know what they want to get out of this industry and maybe it's second job or career change, and they just want to come in, do the basics, get a feel for it, understand the language, uh, understand the feel of a professional kitchen, and then get right to whatever their ambition may be. Um, Chef, did you want to go straight into the two-year diploma as well? Since this yeah, happened? absolutely. It's kind of a, a simple, uh, simple rollover. So um, after H108, we do we move into H113. So actually, the first year for both um both programs is essentially the same so you do the h108 material there's a few little differences there um and then we move into h113 so h113 is really a um kind of like a more in-depth study into all the various disciplines again so the first um first semester of the second year so in third semester the students um study with me actually in my program in skills three and we do um it's cafe production so we start to introduce a lot more of the artisanal side of things the aspects so we start to study sourdough bread techniques high hydration bread techniques and we start to actually simulate preparing foods um in the workplace so we actually create a buffet lunch we have guests come in they um they purchase things, we get feedback from our clients, et cetera, and we modify accordingly. Um, we go much deeper also into laminated pastries, breakfast pastries, all of those kinds of things. And we introduce a little bit of um, kind of more savory or culinary um, aspects as well. Um, and then in the fourth semester, we, um, we delve right into kind of the really, really um, higher end cake finishing, uh, confection making, um, we get do a few weeks of wedding cake production, um, and what's really unique, again, not dissimilar to the hospitality program, I think it's the capstone project in the fourth semester that really sells the course on a lot of people, because what we introduce in second year is we start to look at the business side of things, the branding aspect, um, and food design. So. At the end of third semester, the students actually design their own menus. They work with a partner, um, they create a menu, and then they execute it. And then again, we present it to the public. And it's almost like um, a warm up for the end of fourth semester. So at the end of fourth semester, the students spend the, essentially the entire semester in a small group and they design a complete product line. So based around a theme, whatever that may be. And they do everything from budgeting, ordering, creation, menu design branding development, uh, table display, um, kind of all, all aspects. And then we do, um, generally speaking, in times of uh, these extraordinary times when we're not at the college, I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna roll this out in the fall semester, but likelihood is um, for anyone on this call will likely be in the college by the time fourth semester comes around. Um, we usually do a kind of a grand um, end of year display. Again, there's guests that come in, the students have booths essentially set up and they're selling their wares and um, and it's always, it, it's outstanding. Um, again, and really I think the hard sell for me on the pastry program for George Brown College, just like Christine uh, was touching on is really it's our, it's our interconnectedness to the industry here in the city and Canada at large and really the international community at large. Um, our, all of us in the faculty, we're still very, very deeply ingrained with what's going on out there in the world. Um, we still have, you know, all our friends in the industry working, our peers, our colleagues that we came up with. Um, and it, it might sound crazy, but like the reality for us in the pastry program is we can almost land you anywhere you need to land. So if you've got the ambition and you've got the skill and you've got the determination, 
um, I, you know, my experience is nine times out of ten, we can really get you where you want to go. Um, we're really that uh, that kind of interconnected. Um, I think I'm going to stick stay away from a little bit of how we're going to deliver the content because I have a feeling when we get to the Q and A session that I'll be the one fielding the kind of the overview of what the delivery is going to look like. Probably, I think it's very similar for pastry and culinary, so I can go over that in the Q and A portion. Um, and if there are any other further questions, pop them on the side, and then I'll happy to get uh, be happy to get a little bit more specific uh, when we get into the Q and A. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Jeff. So I'll just briefly go over the other three that you see there. The first is the culinary management, then the manage culinary management integrated, and then culinary management nutrition. So what's important to know is that when you graduate from any of these three programs, they are all a two-year culinary management diploma. They are all built on the same outcomes. So in the end, you should have the same skills. What you need to think about it is what you're looking for in these programs when you decide which one to apply for. In uh, the culinary management nutrition, the first year is heavily focused on culinary skills and this is the same course as actually many of them in, as the culinary management program. Uh, but then there's also some introduction to nutrition and in the second semester the culinary labs start to focus more on from a nutrition perspective whether it's uh, vegan, vegetarian, dietary restrictions, cooking for specific populations, cultures and how different cultures vary in their nutrition perspective. And then in the second year, you'll have courses like the food science and you'll do an industry research project where you have the opportunity to develop a product, for example. Uh, that program has a seven week externship in the second year. And um, we take a small enrollment in that program, generally about 50 students. So it's quite uh, competitive. That program again, SOTI, please remind me, we need to update this slide as well. H119 only runs in fall. Uh, so this September, I think we have a few seats left uh, for the fall. Um, but it is still culinary. It is still chefs that are looking to do this program. And the focus is still on chef skills but from a nutrition perspective. Now culinary management and culinary man management integrated. The first year is exactly the same and it is the same as the one year skills program which we discussed already. When you're thinking about these two programs, consider your best way to learn. The culinary management integrated program in the second year, your third semester is spent partly in our chef's house restaurant and the other part in our cafe, two completely different cooking styles. Uh, and so much different learning experience, but they, you are working in live restaurants. Therefore, the, the experience is you're getting ready for service, you're delivering service, you're cleaning up after service. You have lots of uh, staff there that are to help you with your skills and your time management, um, but it is a live environment. In the Culinary Management H100 program, in your third semester, your labs are in class in the same style as the first year, with the exception as they're more interactive um, when they're in class. And so the professor, the chef professor, does demonstrations at the beginning and throughout the class, and then you recreate your dishes. And the focus on the demonstrations are on skills that you have not learned before. So if there are skills that you've learned several times in the first year, you shouldn't expect the chef to uh, demonstrate that again in the second year, but they will demonstrate new techniques. So that is a more controlled environment uh, using manuals and recipes and faculty. Um, so it just depends on the style of learning that you're looking for. In the fourth semester, in both 100 and 116, there is an externship, a 14 week, week externship. Uh, and you have an opportunity to work in all sorts of um, industries, whether it's a fine dining restaurant, uh, food service, um, quick style food service, uh, product testing, recipe development. Um, basically, you tell us what you're looking for, and uh, we have a great team that can help um, help place you or get you to apply for positions that meet what you're, what you're expecting to learn. You can go to the next slide, please. And sorry, just as a note, in the culinary management in H116, we have also deferred in those programs the butchery and the cafe production classes to the following semester. So you will not be doing either of those online. And just like the hospitality school, you are able to bridge from the diploma to, the, to a degree. Uh, we have courses that run every summer. 
So we have a group of students right now that are taking their online uh, theoretical courses, only theory courses when you're doing the bridge. Uh, and you take, I think it's six courses, three courses in May and June, and three courses in July and August. And that is, and they are very intense courses. It's accounting and macroeconomics. And so it's, it is intense, but we have great faculty that spend a lot of time and a lot of um, resources to help you get through those courses. And then in the third year, you join the culinary degree students that started in the first year and you do the last two years, the same as the culinary degrees, the rest of the culinary degree students. And so this is the degree from the very beginning. It is four years long. There are two externships during uh, this uh, program and they're both done during the summer, not during the school years. Uh, it is the first and still only the four-year culinary management honors degree in Canada. Uh, so what we are very careful about in this degree is to make sure that the first two years have the same number of culinary hours as our culinary management diploma and certificate programs. They have the same type of classes. The difference would be that in those practical classes, it's not just cooking and skill development. There's also theoretical components in those classes to work on your critical thinking and your critical writing skills. So on top of that, in the first two years, you have other courses as well that are degree level. And then you also will be taking courses, as it mentions on the slide there, macroeconomics, restaurant risk management, strategic revenue management courses as well. But all the courses are focused from a culinary perspective. So uh, it's a really intense four-year degree. We actually have our first group of students that have just graduated this year. So that's very exciting for us. Uh, our enrollment has increased uh, tremendously every single year. So it is becoming a high demand program. Um, but, you know, it does have a higher uh, entry level requirement if you're entering from the first year. So if you don't meet that, not to worry, as we said before, you could start in the diploma program and then as long as you have the right um, GPA, then you're able to move into the, um, third, the, the bridge and then the third year of the degree program. And so we also have uh, three postgraduates in the culinary school, in the chef school. Uh, chef Heyman will talk about the French patissier, and I can chip in if he's uh, not clear on anything, and I'll talk about the other two. The food and nutrition management program is a program that only runs against Soti. Sorry, we have to update the slide as well. The food nutrition management program only runs in September. Uh, that program is specifically for students who have some culinary experience. You do need to have a culinary credential before you can apply to this program. Uh, it is accredited by the Canadian Society of Nutrition Management, and it is for students who are interested in going into a career that supports, whether it's long-term care or retirement, hospitals, um, from a culinary perspective. So you do two placements there. Uh, in your second semester and the first one is from the kitchen perspective so you work with a dietitian and you learn how how food service works in those environments and then your second uh, experience is from a management perspective it runs in September it goes just a little bit longer than the end of April it goes I think two or three weeks longer into the semester to, to facilitate your two um, ex externships and then the next one is the culinary arts Italian program this one only runs in May. Uh, we unfortunately had to delay it last May, so it's not, it hasn't run since uh, the May before, and it will be running hopefully next May. And um, that program is one semester at George Brown College, and you'll be with our uh, Italian chef faculty, and you learn both Italian culinary skills and Italian pastry uh, skills. And then at the end of August, uh, we take you to Italy and you spend three weeks at Elma, which is a beautiful castle. Um, and you take classes five days a week while you're at Elma for those three weeks and you do externships on the weekend. So you get, the chef will take you to um, whether it's where the prosciutto is made or the balsamic vinegar. I mean, it's, it's a dream, obviously, this program. And then after the three weeks in Elma in Italy, you then spend the next 12 weeks doing a placement and the placements are all throughout Italy. Uh, the chef works with Elma and you to find um, what kind of experience, to understand what kind of experience you're looking for. And it could be everything from a large hotel in Milan to a small 
uh, Nona in, you know, in the hill somewhere in Italy where you're, you know, slaughtering your meat in the morning for the afternoon uh, service. So you really work with the faculty carefully to make sure that you're finding the experience that works for you. And then in January, the students come back and they showcase what they've learned in our restaurant at the chef's house. They create menus, uh, which they have to do their recipe testing and ordering and everything. Uh, and they're based on a region in which they lived in when they were in Italy. And for one week, uh, through Instagram and social media, it's their responsibility to sell, sell out the restaurant. And uh, they serve their menu that they've presented. It's really exciting to see some of the food that these students um, are creating in their third semester. So, Chef, did you want to talk about the Advanced French Patissier now? Yeah, absolutely, Christine. Sounds good. Um, so, not unlike uh, Christine explained about the Italian program, um, we offer off, also offer another dream program, which is our um, Advanced French Patissier program. So, that's a certificate program, um, usually geared towards um, students that have graduated from the Diploma program with us, H113. Um, sometimes, though, we do do um, direct acceptance from the one-year certificate program, provided the professors um, from the first year from the H-108 program um, can kind of certify that the students are at a, at a level, an advanced level enough um, to really participate. And how the French Patissier program uh, works, it's, so it's May to May. And uh, like the Italian program, the students spend the summer, the first semester, with us at George Brown, uh, specifically with Chef Maison, who is our, um, our French patissier expert at the college. Um, and for the first semester, it's really an introduction to all things. So a little bit of basic language French. Um, you're in the lab three days a week studying really advanced skills in all disciplines again. So actually, um, there's a chocolate team each week, there's a bread team each week, there's a venoiserie team each week, um, and a cakes and pastries team each week. And the, the teams rotate, and Chef Maison works very, very closely. It's a very, very intimate um, environment in that class, and he works very, very closely um, with all the students to really, really try and te start to tease their expertise out of them. And at the same time, obviously, managing and um, teaching new techniques. Um, and then in September, uh, at the end of August, rather, the students are off to um, ESNP, which is a globally famous, if not arguably the most famous, um, pastry school in the world, which is in France. Um, it's run by uh, Alain Ducasse, who's the world's most you know, decorated Michelin star chef. Um, and the students spend um, four weeks at ESMP, uh, again studying kind of very, very high level um, advanced French pastry technique. Um, from there, uh, the students are sent off onto their uh, internships or their co-op placements, um, which have been predetermined before the students leave, of course. And the co-op placements, um, not dissimilar to um, the in, uh, externship placements uh, in the H113 program in Toronto, because the students are coming from a program affiliated with ESNP and because of our deep relationship now having run this program for a number of years, the options are virtually limitless um, in terms of where our pastry students get to end up. So they spend a great deal of time with uh, Chef Maison and the first few weeks of the program really trying to determine what they're after because of course some people want to go work in a a small rustic mom and pop uh, pot potentially uh, bakery you know in a rural town in France and then other people are um, really desperate to try and get in with uh, Cedric Grolet you know at the Le Marais Hotel in Paris so Chef Maison and the team at George Brown and ESMP are so well connected um, they really really do generally get the students um, virtually anywhere they want to get um, and then actually almost more interesting is after that you spend six weeks at your um, placement, the students return back, and then once we've returned back to the college, we spend another semester, uh, the end of the first, second semester and then into the third semester, um, back in the lab with Chef Maison. But now what the students do is each student has the opportunity to really delve into their own menu design, menu development, um, and how the program kind of operates is each student is designated a week, which is kind of their week, where they will, um, the entire class will focus their energies on delivering the products um, 
and kind of the vision of the students who's leading or guiding that week. Um, so under the guidance of Chef Maya Song, uh, the students have the opportunity to really, really um, macro manage the entire class and really start to understand everything from the budgeting aspect, the marketing aspect, the labor management aspect, uh, which is very unique. And I think something that opens uh, a lot of people's eyes the first time they are in charge of kind of dealing with other people. And um, all around, personally, I would say that the, the level of expertise in terms of technique that is taught in this course is, is unparalleled in my experience anyway. And, um, and the depth of understanding from sort of all angles of the professional realm of pastry is really, really solidified um, in this postgraduate program. Um, I, I have nothing but the highest regard. And to be honest, having now been at the college for several years and working with several of my students that have um, worked through the H113 diploma program with me, and then I watched their, their growth through the third year when they enter into the advanced French Patissier program. Uh, a three-year a three-year three student of George Brown College in our baking and pastry arts program uh, is is a is an asset to this industry that uh, like I said unparalleled in my experience. Um, yeah, so let me know if anyone has further questions. Again, we can uh, I can answer those in the Q and A. Thanks again, Christine. Thanks, Jeff. So we have two other programs at the Chef School. Just quickly, we have two apprenticeships, a cook and a baker pastry. Uh, so what you need to know for these programs is that they are uh, controlled by the ministry. So if you're interested in doing an apprenticeship, you actually have to get an apprenticeship in industry first. So you have to find a job uh, in the industry that will hire you on as an apprenticeship. And then that job has to contact the ministry and register you as an apprentice. And then from there, the ministry contacts us to set you up to take the culinary or the pastry program. So it's a great option for someone who's already in industry and who ha has an employer that offers an apprenticeship program. Um, it uh, runs, they, it depends on the enrollment when they run. I believe this fall we're running a baker and a culinary program. Um, but uh, you can't apply for it through the George Brown College website. You actually have to apply through it through the ministry once you become an apprenticeship apprentice. Next slide, please, thanks. So hi everyone, I'm just gonna briefly explain the assessment testing that some of our applicants are required to complete. So there's two different kinds of assessments. The first is an admissions assessment. And this one is for applicants who don't meet the minimum eligibility requirements for their program. So this assessment will measure if you have the academic skills you need to start the program. And very importantly, the results of this assessment determine if you're actually eligible for the program. The other type of assessment uh, is the one that more of our students have to take. This is a placement test. Uh, some applicants have to take an English and or a math placement test after they've accepted an offer for their program. Uh, this is because our certificate and diploma students need to complete college level English and math courses. And the results of the placement test determine if you're ready for the college level courses or if you need to take the foundation level course first to help develop your skills. The results of this test don't matter in terms of your program eligibility. They're really just for your English and math placement. Uh, if you have any questions, please visit the website that's currently up on the screen, which is georgebrown.ca slash assessment. Thanks, Ali, for that. Uh, I'm just going to quickly talk about uh, the study tour opportunities. And uh, Chef Heyman, I know we didn't get to do Japan, but maybe you'd like to pitch in and talk about Japan, what we were supposed to do, uh, and Doris as well. So we have historically been offering a uh, numerous amount of study tours at George Brown College, and we're hoping to be able to start that up again maybe next year. We don't know, obviously, yet. Um, and we're spending a bit of time right now looking at how we can actually offer some study tours right in Ontario and uh, maybe even across Canada while we can't do international. Because right in our own province here, there is a lot to see and a lot to learn about everything from wine to agriculture to food. So we are going to be doing some planning around that this fall. 
In the past, though, we've been able to offer some fantastic study tours, and you see four examples up here. Um, and so in the culinary, in the chef school, we've managed to take students to Peru, to Costa Rica, Montreal, and Thailand. Uh, France happens with the uh, French Patissier program. We've, uh, the, the tours are anywhere from one week to two weeks. It depends on um, the time of year that we're offering it. We aim to do our study tours during intercession periods uh, so that you don't miss classes. And sometimes uh, they run a little bit longer, but we work with the faculty for you to make sure that you don't miss anything. Many of our study tours are offered as uh, you can get a course credit for it. So it depends on the study tour. Uh, when we did the India and uh, Thailand trip, that was a two week trip. Uh, and we worked with schools, uh, culinary schools in both countries to offer culinary practical classes as well as lots of day trips throughout the regions that we were in. Uh, the Spain was actually for credit for the nutrition course if you were interested in that. The British Columbia trip, you could do your sustainability for cooks uh, credit in that course there. Chef Amy, did you want to talk about what you were planning on doing for the Japan trip and we hope that we'll be able to do in the next year or so? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, myself and uh, my colleague uh, Jennifer Lacan de Souza, this was the first year actually that um, we were supposed to run a study tour that we sold out really quickly, we were happy for, uh, to take the students on a 10 day um, trip to Japan. Um, and what, what the way our angle was, was uh, Chef de Souza and I are both uh, faculty in the Baking and Pastry Arts program. And while the study tour was geared towards culinary and baking and pastry program um, students, as well as hospitality for that matter, you can imagine that with um, two pastry chefs designing the curriculum that uh, there was definitely a, a pastry-esque leaning to many aspects of it. Um, unfortunately, we were supposed to leave in May of this year, or sorry, April of this year. Um, so as you can well imagine, we did not get on a plane and go to uh, fly into Tokyo, Narita. But um, but yeah, we were looking at um, we looked at it from a lot of angles. So having you know, fr I'm fresh from kind of spending a year developing this, um, and it's it's a lot of work. But um, really, we looked at it from a number of angles. So our kind of our two goals were to um, to really you know introduce um, Japanese kind of food aesthetic and knowledge and understanding to the students as kind of a, a deeper understanding of the, the history and the tradition. Um, we also included as much as possible uh, multiple hands-on um, hands uh, workshops and things like that with, um, with professionals, uh, obviously, in Japan. Um, and then we also tried to take a really holistic approach to it as well. So rather than, you know, this is a directly a pastry trip or this is a culinary only tour, we really, really wanted to include to all aspects of the food. So we were looking at food production systems, um, whether they were super hyper modern. So we were going to see um, the largest vertical farm on a skyscraper roof in Tokyo. We were going to visit super small scale miso and sake producers in the countryside. Um, and then we were also interested in opening the students eyes up to um, Japanese art. We had a pottery class lined up and kind of that whole aspect of the aesthetic as well. So. Um, unfortunately, like Christine said, obviously we did not run it uh, in 2020. Um, fingers crossed that I'm flying to Japan May 2021, um, obviously based on whatever the heck happens in the next little while. <laughs> anyway, uh, any further questions, like always, we'll talk about it in the Q&A there. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. And Doris, did you want to talk about some of the hospitality study tours? Sure. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Chef. Um, through the School of Hospitality Tourism Management, we've taken students uh, to Europe, but uh, several European countries, Switzerland, Spain, France, Italy, Germany, and we had the pleasure of visiting attractions, but back of house. So in Switzerland, in Lucerne, we visited one of Europe's most prestigious um, music houses, um, and we were able to do a tour of of, uh, the back of house, which was tremendous. We visited uh, La Galerie, 
let me try that again, Gallieri degli Uffici in Firenze, in Florence, where we were, uh, we spent a full day walking through history, through Botticelli and Leonardo da Vinci pieces. And we also visited some of uh, Europe's oldest markets where students were able to buy fresh ingredients and we picnicked in some of the most beautiful parts so it's a cost effective trip and you get to visit uh, attractions but from a different perspective while you're making connections one of the most memorable connections that our students made was um, uh, in, on a trip in Belgium where students actually went to visit the craft brewers and uh, find out about the wheat and the hops that are grown in that part of Belgium. So the trips are very hands-on. And as Chef mentioned, um, you're getting the perspective from uh, individuals, um, faculty that have expertise in this area and have the connections in the area. Um, and yes, you get to experience um, Europe in, in ways that you would never be able to if you were a pedestrian tourist. Um, we also bring students to different attractions in uh, Ontario. Um, for example, I've run uh, trips to Prince Edward County on the east end of Lake Ontario to visit uh, wineries, poultry uh, producers, um, uh, wool uh, developers, and um, an old creamery where they actually churn butter by hand. So students have um, an opportunity to see the 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 clever I I entrepreneurship that Ontarians are actually um, facilitating. So not only are the trips international, but the domestic trips are just as dynamic. Um, thank you. If there's any questions, let me know at the end of the the session. Thank you. Thank you, Doris. Uh, so I will be speaking to you about industry field placements uh, within the Center of Hospitality and Culinary Arts. The industry field placements are a component of your program and our work integrated learning, uh, known as the Will Office, connects students with our network of over a thousand active industry partners around the world. I represent part of a team who between us covers all of the culinary and hospitality, externship and co-op placements for the division. We all work very closely with industry and our students in seeking and securing positions for our partners that match the needs of our students. And so what that means is that we actually post, we recruit opportunities from our employers and we post them on an internal uh, site called Orbis and students apply for these positions. So we also, we have the resources to help you uh, find and secure a position. Uh, so the different types of field placements within our division, uh, the first one is an industry practicum and it is applicable to certificate programs. It is a seven week field placement with over 150 hours of hands on learning. Our next uh, type of field placement is an industry externship and it is applicable to diploma programs in both culinary and hospitality. It consists of a 14-week field placement with over 300 hours of hands-on learning. And we often um, re tell our students that it is like having a 14-week interview for the employer and for themselves. And many of the students in this program graduate in the workplace at the end of their 14-week externship, which again provides the employer the opportunity to observe their skills to determine if there is a match for both parties. And the next uh, type of field placement is a co-op work term, and it is applicable to our degree programs, and again, in culinary and hospitality. There are two work terms throughout each program, totaling approximately a thousand hours of hands-on learning directly in the industry, which makes our students very marketable at the end of this program. Uh, field education opportunities right now are subject to travel restrictions and available in Toronto, Canada only. Next slide, please. 
So as a student uh, of George Brown College, you have access to several services, including accessible learning services, student counseling, the Career Center, Peer Connect, TLC, known as the Tutoring and Learning Center, and many more. Next slide, please. Hi everyone, my name is Nadila. I am the Business Development Officer for Asia. I will quickly go through the admission requirements for international students. So uh, if you're an international student, in order to start your program at George Brown College, you'll have to be at least 18 years old at the time of registration. And if you're planning to apply for diploma or degree program, the minimum admission requirement is that you have to graduate from high school or equivalent. So we will be looking at your transcript from grade 10 to grade 12. And if you're applying for postgraduate program, usually um, most of our postgraduate program require college or university degree. But for programs such as, um, for postgraduate programs such as culinary arts Italian um, or advanced French patisserie, you, if you have a one-year certificate and you have a minimum one-year work experience, you are also eligible to apply. Uh, if English, sorry, uh, can you go back to that slide? If English is not the first language in your country, you will also be required to provide proof of English proficiency. We will go through the detailed requirements in next slide. And sometimes there are um, additional country specific requirements for international students. And you can find this information on the George Brown College admission requirements page. We will also go through that later. So in order to submit your application in our online application system for international students, uh, you will have to pay the non-refundable $95 application fee. Next slide, please. So here is a uh, proof of English proficiency requirement. So for example, for diploma and certificate program, we require IELTS academic, overall six, minimum 5.5 inch skill band. For postgraduate and degree program, we require overall 6.5, minimum six in each skill band. And your IELTS academic test result has to be valid within two years when admission um, process your application. And we now also accept duolingual test result. It is an online um, English testing system. So it is extremely helpful for students who are currently located at some regions that uh, where IELTS test centers are temporarily closed. Uh, you can take this duolingual English test. And because it's online, you can take it anywhere, anytime. Next slide, please. Uh, for requirements by country of origin. So uh, because some countries, they have different education systems, so uh, we do have additional requirements based on your country of origin. So you can find this information on our website. Uh, if you land in George Brown College official website, you will see international and uh, click that, you will see future students and then it will show you the admission requirements. Next slide, please. And this will direct you to admission requirements for international students. And you will be able to select your country or region in this yellow box and see the detailed information for the, for, your, for the admission requirements in your region. Next slide, please. So if you have any questions about admissions, including if you're eligible to a certain program, uh, how or when to submit your application, um, please do not email the program coordinators because all the applications for international students are processed at the international center. So please contact a recruitment specialist in your region and they will be able to assist you with the application process. So how to find a recruitment specialist? please go to um, this website. URL is listed here. Next slide, please. And it will direct you to contact International Center page. So you will be able to see all the recruitment specialist contact information in this red um, box. For example, my region includes Asia, China, Japan, Philippines, and Southeast Asia. If you click that, you will be able to see my 
email address as well as an appointment link where you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with myself and a further discuss uh, about your applications. So that will be all for international admissions. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I uh, now we're at the part of the program where we will answer your questions. So uh, Ali, are you going to be moderating the questions section there? Hi, Christine. Yes, I am. I'm ready to start whenever you are. Great. Thank you. Okay, so um, I have a few questions together that are about uh, online learning for practical labs. Uh, I'll ask them together since I think this is more for students who may have come a bit later in the session. So from Catherine, uh, for the practical classes, how will we engage with the chef if we are cooking individually in our own house? And to add to that, uh, will we be sourcing our own ingredients for the classes uh, with the added comment from a student that celery isn't available for that? That's a great question. So I'll start and then if Chef Heyman, if you have more to add, feel free. Um, so the first part of the question is how you'll be interacting with the chef professor. So you'll start with a demonstration um, and the demonstration is uh, usually a couple of hours long. Um, they'll go through every skill. We'll watch videos together. The faculty will talk about the videos as they're, as they're watching them. Um, and you'll have opportunities to speak to the faculty during the class, ask lots of questions. And then um, the faculty, it will depend on the individual courses, but for the most part, the faculty then organize several, several time slots during the week. If you would like to reach out and ask questions about what you're doing or if you're struggling with something, and then we will be submitting your project. And again, it will vary slightly between the professors, but for the most part, you'll be submitting uh, a variety of either videos or photos or blogs. Um, which will then demonstrate all the skills that you've learned. The faculty will then take that and uh, fill out a rubric, which is a grading format, and give you really good feedback on every single uh, submission that you did. And if you want one-on-one -on -one feedback to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion through Teams, which is the platform that we use, uh, the faculty will organize that time to have that conversation with you as well. In first semester, uh, we do understand that it's going to be a, uh, a big learning curve, so they've, they've developed the videos and the content to really work on everything from uh, knife safety to how to hold a knife to uh, individual cooking skills. I'm uh, pretty confident that uh, you will get the support from the faculty, I'm very confident you'll get the support from the faculty that you're looking for. We've not had any complaints this summer that uh, students don't feel that um, they are being supported by the culinary faculty. So I'm confident that you'll get your, what you're looking for in the fall on that. Chef Heyman, did you want to add anything else for the first semester of baking and pastry? Yeah, let me let me just uh, talk quickly to how we're doing it. Um, very similar, but you know we're different departments, so we've just got a little bit of a, a different approach. Um, so in baking and pastry arts, uh, as I said, we spent a great deal of time and a great deal of passion uh, developing the the online program. So essentially, what it looks like is um, the students spend. Um, so we do two five-hour labs a week, basically, where we're we're cooking practically um, in each of our semesters. Um, so what that looks like for us is um, we have really, really beautifully curated um, online content. So it's a package of uh, a little bit of theory and then all the skills videos laid out really, really cleanly and nicely so the students can review them. And our kind of expectation is that the material has been reviewed by the students um, probably in about an hour or two. Um, prior to the beginning of our lab classes. And what we then do um, at, for the first about uh, hour of each of our five hour labs that are scheduled each week is the professor goes over all the little tips and tricks, the time management skills, things to look over um, or to make sure about uh, since the students will be cooking at home. And then actually what I think uh, is one of the parts that really makes our online delivery stand out, um, having done some investigation into how other schools are doing it, is we remain available to the students during the allotted lab time. And I've been speaking to a number of my professors this week, actually, that are teaching um, classes currently, 
And they said it's unbelievable how much the students are actually reaching out. So what um, most of us are delivering through either through Blackboard Collaborate or another application called Teams. Um, and on Teams and actually on Blackboard Collaborate as well, it's very easy to do kind of video, uh, video calls. So what's actually happening is, is as students are working through that day's material, if they're having a little bit of a hard time or something's not making sense, they actually just very quickly hit video call. They've got their professor face to face. I mean, I saw footage of, uh, you know, students actually like using their phones to just say, you know, does my bread dough in the bowl look good? Do you feel like it's proofed enough? I'm the first person to say, you know, it's, it's not as easy for me as just poking a loaf of bread and letting you know if it's fermented well or not. But, but we all have a, a level of um, expertise that it, it seems to really be working and, um, and act, to be honest, a lot greater than we would. So, so that's kind of how, how it's working for us is these, these kind of um, these short demonstrations where we work over the material with the students and then the students and then we're available to the students um, for the 10 hours they're in lab. But then also beyond that, um, most of us have made ourselves available you know, within reasonable working hours most days of the week as well. So if the students are doing it. And then um, we also give very specific guidelines to what we want the students to shoot. So in terms of the grading, if you're making bread, I want to see it. Uh, you'll have lists. Okay, take a picture at this stage, please. At this stage, please. I want to see it at this stage. And then we also have the students do um, like a critical reflection piece um, for each of the products they make each week. And, and they spend some time actually thinking themselves, you know, this was good. I think this could have been improved, et cetera. And also the students have been really receptive to that part as well. So. Great. Right, thanks, Jeff. And also the other question was, are you buying your own ingredients? Yes, you will need to purchase your own ingredients for first semester. Uh, the faculty have developed a grocery shopping list so that it makes it easy for you to see what you need every single week. I'm going to touch on that one really quick too, actually, Christine. Um, because there was, I think, some trepidation about that. Um, so as uh, I think all of us have mentioned, um, all of the faculty at the college, we understand the extraordinary times that we're in and we're all committed to flexibility here. So if you're a student that can't access celery as an example where you are, or you can't purchase you know, professional grade chocolate batons for chocolate croissants, we are completely understanding. We've made sure that the material was edited in such a way that, or flexible in such a way rather, that um, that the the students will never be missing the essential skills, but we can adapt to you know um, using materials essentially that are available to the students. And also, um, you know, we learn from our mistakes, like everybody. Um, I know that a lot of the feedback with the students uh, this semester was that it was a lot of running back and forth to the grocery store. So we made a monster effort in the pastry side of things to really ensure that a couple of weeks before the program even starts that the students are provided shopping lists with recommendations on where to purchase things if you're inside of Canada. Um, so that you know you can get a bulk of your shopping and organizing done before the course even starts so that on a weekly basis you're just popping out for the quick perishables um, you know the milk the cream uh, perhaps a veggie or a fruit for that week um, etc so I hope that I hope that helps clarify things for people uh, regarding purchasing okay thank you both um, Christine, the next set of questions is specifically about the food and nutrition postgraduate. Uh, some of it is about how the program itself actually works, and then what are the job opportunities for students as part of the program. And then the final question for that particular program is, if you don't have any prior background in the field of nutrition, will that pose a challenge? Thanks, Ali. Great question. So you don't have to have a background in nutrition, but you do have to have a background in culinary. Uh, so not under not having a background in nutrition won't be a problem. This is not a dietitian program, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the program runs Monday to Friday. The classes usually start at 8 and run until 1 p.m. And I think they're planning on the same type of delivery for the fall. 
Um, actually, maybe Monday, Monday to Thursday. Uh, and it's done that specifically so that people can still work in industry or other jobs in the afternoons and evenings. I think if you really want some really specific information about this program, your best uh, option would be to contact Lloyd Sadeko, who's the coordinator of the program. And his email address is on the website. It, um, I can also tell you that this program uh, graduates students that want to work in long-term care retirement hospitals, uh, so working with uh, the older population. Um, and there are a variety of opportunities. You can work in the kitchens, uh, but you can also work from a management perspective. And so those two placements that you do give you an opportunity to see both sides, both from the kitchen perspective and from a management perspective. But Lloyd Sudeiko, who's been working in this industry for probably 30 years, uh, would be happy to meet with you and give you a full um, description of the program if you want further questions answered. Okay, and uh, one more question for you, Christine, is do we know when the college will be able to reopen? So in the, we're actually doing a pilot with the H108 Baking and Pastry Program. It starts uh, August 4th for two weeks. They'll be doing their last four weeks of labs in class. Um, and so we're just working through all of the details on that. In the fall, uh, as I indicated earlier, all of the graduating students are in lab. Um, and there will only be lab classes of 12 students and they will have to wear masks during the entire class and we're just finalizing all the protocol around that. Uh, students will have to take COVID training before they can attend their labs. Right now, the college is planning for full lab delivery for culinary and hospitality for January. Um, but the reality is we have to wait for further direction on that because the ministry, um, you know, when COVID happened, uh, education was deemed non-essential, which means we didn't have an option but to close the schools down. So if that happens again in October, November, lots of people are talking about a second wave, then that's going to change what our plan is for January. So, you know, one of the things the college has been really fantastic about is allowing students to defer. So if you start in September and then we announce that the college is fully online in the fall, uh, in the winter term, you do have the opportunity to defer. And since most of these, these programs that start in September, if not all, um, almost all of them, um, do run every term, then you can start again in May if that's when we're back into class again. So the college has been really good about allowing students to defer for no extra cost. And I'm sure if we're put in this position again uh, mid-fall, they'll give you that opportunity in January as well. So I wouldn't, um, you know, make a decision on not starting in September because of the uncertainties for January. Just know that uh, you will have options if that decision is made to be fully online in the winter term. Thanks, Christine. Uh, Doris, I'll pose the next question to you, uh, which is just about online delivery of the hospitality courses in the fall. Thank you, Ali. Um, online delivery will be the um, platform that we'll be using for the fall for all of our hospitality classes. Um, in the case of the labs, for example, the beer class, wine class, uh, cocktail and distillate class, uh, they, the classes will be fully online and we will not be tasting product, but we will be assessing products through a variety of um, assignments. In one case, one of the classes that I deliver is actually um, students assessing products through a social media platform. And we're using Instagram and engaging the industry to come on to students uh, platforms, which is a really good form of networking. Um, we have guest speakers that are coming into class. I have Julie Biden, who is the um, lead educator educator for the WSET program in the United States. She's coming into our class on Tuesday. So there's an engagement piece with uh, the industry. Um, we have Dr. Laura Catana from Argentina, wine, very famous winemaker who is going to walk us through the vineyards 
online, which is a great way to experience the products. Now, every week in my classes, I'm putting um, Doris's picks and I put reasonable wines under $15 to compare and contrast. And this is only for, for entertainment and enjoyment, but for students that are engaged in the products, they can go out and purchase uh, the, the products and compare and contrast based on the theoretical lessons that we have. So yes, it's different delivery style than in person, but you still experience the products one-on-one um, -on -one and you are able to apply the theory of beverage assessment uh, uh, in, in a form of um, different assignments. Um, we hope to be back in the classroom in January, uh, but we're prepared to be online in January pending uh, what the ministry says. I hope that answered your question. Thank you very much, Doris. I have a few questions about the externship opportunities, uh, which I'll post urge you to read Doreen. So Doreen Ricardo is asking, I believe for culinary specifically, if there are industry externships outside of Ontario and other provinces, and also in England specifically. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, we do have externships and co-op opportunities available in other provinces. Uh, we have a very large career fair that happens uh, annually, and many of the employers uh, from resorts, hotels, private clubs, um, cruise ships, etc., come to that career fair uh, to recruit students for uh, co-op and externship opportunities, as well as for graduate uh, graduate opportunities after the at the end of their program um, we have um, I work with the hospitality students but I have had a student working in a culinary position in England um, actually in London uh, working for uh, uh, a restaurant group there uh, and um, I don't know if we've had other in England but students are also able to uh, look and search for their own opportunities. They must be approved uh, by the uh, co-op or externship coordinators uh, before the students are able uh, to, to go ahead. Um, but students are also able to do that as well. I hope that answered the question. Thank you, Doreen. Can you also know when the career fair is? Uh, the career fair is usually uh, the uh, first week. It's usually the first Wednesday, but I mean that could change. First Wednesday uh, in in February, uh, and um, it uh, it is a very large career fair uh, that uh, offers um, opportunities for all of our students in culinary and hospitality programs. Thank you. Right. And then you. one more externship question. Again, anyone else can jump in as well. Uh, the question is, how and what will the school do to help students land internships and full-time jobs during this pandemic and economic depression, given the current stage of food and beverage industry and the hospitality industry? Okay, so we so we have been working with our partners and keeping in touch on both sides, in the culinary and hospitality side, um, so that um, if they have opportunities and when they have opportunities for our students, uh, that we will be able to get that information out to our students as well as post these opportunities. Um, some employers have had. Um, I guess it would be different in a culinary um, way, but have posted opportunities or provided opportunities that students can work from home. Uh, and also uh, the hospitality and culinary um, programs have had a virtual externship, Joris would be able to speak about that, uh, have had a virtual externship uh, course this summer for students and students have had real connections with industry and have done research projects and had an opportunity to connect in this way. Um, so uh, it, it definitely will, will continue to develop um, but employers will be looking to bring on students as they start uh, mobilizing and, and reopening their businesses. I don't know if anyone else would like to add anything to that. 
I can add to the virtual externship, Doreen. Thank you. Thank um, you. So the, the virtual externship is online. We're currently delivering it uh, to all four programs at the School of Hospitality. And the backbone of that externship is that students get to meet leaders in industry. Um, each program has a minimum 24 industry leaders where we do sessions with them. They're recorded. Students can go back and listen to some of the key points that are uh, being discussed. The, the students actually build an online presence through LinkedIn certifications. So students end up with 23 significant certifications that are relevant to the industry. Our program advisory committee made up of employers um, were part of the decision making saying our students, our graduates should know this. And if they know it, they are in um, in advance of uh, an, an and a student that may not have these um, certifications. Uh, your online presence is very important and we give you the opportunity to practice some of the interviewing skills that you might be um, in jobs for later on. Uh, you make real connections with employers and the research that is um, conducted uh, online is relevant to jobs that you may be applying for. Um, we are finding that the cohort that's in this virtual externship is developing skills that students who were in the, let's say, January face-to-face -face cohort do not have. Um, and the outcomes are exactly the same other than the physical interaction um, as students would have been in industry, except you get to meet more than one or two leaders in the organization. Um, so it really gives a, a rich, broad perspective of the industry uh, through an online platform. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Doris and Doreen. Uh, Christine, the next questions are about the Honours Bachelor of Commerce in Culinary Management. And they're from Remy. So he's curious as to the career opportunities from that program, and specifically if you can work for government food policy. As well, is there a bachelor's degree in baking and pastry arts planned for the next few years? Uh, great questions, thank you. So uh, I'm not sure that the culinary management degree would allow you to work in food policy. Um, we're actually currently just waiting for ministry approval for a, a honors degree in actually food studies. And if that's something that you're looking at, that degree is probably more um, geared to what you're looking for. We hope to receive that approval probably in the next month or so, and it is scheduled to run in fall of 2021. Um, so the kind of uh, jobs that we are finding students are, so it actually it's been surprising and the culinary students that have taken the degree. Um, we assumed that uh, when students took this program, they were looking at going into as an executive chef perhaps. Um, but we found that a lot of the students are very entrepreneurial in their mindset and what they're looking for starting their own businesses, but also looking to run large establishment corporate uh, places that have several several um, outlets. Uh, there's a lot of interest in people running big operations. Um, but uh, as we only have our first year of graduates right now, we're going to have to wait and see what those alumni end up doing with their degrees. But I think that we're, we're going to see a lot of entrepreneurial um, operations become out of this degree. But again, you'll work with the faculty and you have to let us know what your interests are. And between the two externships, we will uh, gear you in directions that will give you the opportunity to learn about those uh, interests that you have. And uh, I think you'll find by the end of the four years, you'll have a really good sense of what you're looking for. Okay, thank you, Christine. Next question is for Doris. Uh, are there study tours for all of the hospitality programs? 
Yes, um, there are study opportunities for all of the, the programs. And also, um, one thing that I didn't mention earlier was that there are opportunities to apply for study tour bursaries and scholarships. So um, we have a, a very robust bursary scholarship program at George Brown College. And um, students, uh, you know, some, some students um, get more than one scholarship or bursary in their lifetime at the college. But uh, to your point, yes, there are study tours available for all of the programs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doris. Hi, uh, Christine, the next question will be for you. Uh, Joan is curious what career opportunities exist for H134 and what benefits does that program provide? So the career opportunities for 134 are really geared to people who are looking to go into culinary uh, as cooks and, and eventually chefs. Um, so it's a like I said, it's a one year program and it's an, really an introduction to the basic fundamental culinary skills. So you should be looking at positions uh, and that's up to you if you're looking at, uh, you know, individual restaurants, corporate restaurants, hotels, um, maybe catering, private chef, uh, anything from a culinary perspective. So they are, uh, this program is really geared for people who either are already in the industry and just looking for a credential or, or, or really know what they're, or really don't know what they're looking for and just want to do a one year to get a better idea of what their goals might be. Okay, thank you, Christine. Uh, and one more question for you. Ricardo would like to know if we have to wear our chef uniforms in our homes. If so, how will we get it if we live outside of Canada? Hmm, that's a great question, actually. I, I, Chef Heyman, I'm not sure if you can answer that for pastry because we've talked a lot about this. I think that we agreed uh, that students should wear their chef uniforms. However, what we're really looking for from a health and safety perspective is that you're not wearing, you know, you're not bare feet when you're in the kitchen, that you have closed toe shoes on. Um, but you can purchase the uniforms online through the bookstore and they can be shipped directly to you. So getting the uniforms would not be a, would not be a challenge because you can't get them through the bookstore. Um, but I'm going to have to get back on that one. I, I don't, Chef Heyman, are you, is the baking and pastry program requiring students to wear uniforms in their first year? Do you know? So we've encouraged it. And let me speak quickly to the uniforms, just so everyone's aware, professional chef's jackets and, uh, the pants, et cetera, that's recommended by the school as well as the shoes. They, um, there's some benefits to them. So they're designed as an example. If hot liquid gets poured on you, the hot liquid rolls off very quickly, um, et cetera. It would seem unlikely to me that anyone in any country, virtually any country in the world, could not access somehow um, a chef's uniform. We're encouraging the chef's uniform, as Christine mentioned, from a health and safety aspect. Um, and we're really, really stressing uh, why we're encouraging them, particularly in the first couple of weeks of the program. But um, but like all other aspects, given the unique circumstances of the times we're in right now, flexibility is the name of the game. So without question, I mean, if I have a student that tells me that they've done everything they could, they cannot for the life of them find a chef's uniform, of course I'm going to work with that student one-on-one -on -one just to make some recommendations on, uh, you know, the safest, best things they can wear based on their circumstances, etc. Okay, thank you both. And Christine, Catherine is asking if you could please elaborate a bit more on the Food Studies program. Uh, well, it still hasn't been approved by the ministry. We submitted it quite a while ago, so we're still waiting for that. It's a four-year honors degree. Um, we are ensuring that the first two years also have a lot of culinary skills as well, because what we're looking to do is to graduate students who understand culinary, but have a much bigger picture um, about food issues from a um, culinary perspective, whether it's around sustainability or food equity, 
Um, really, Lori Stahlbrand and Caitlin uh, are the two faculty that are developing this program. And as soon as it gets approved, we will be organizing lots of one-on-one, -on -one, uh, lots of sessions just like today to talk about the program and um, to answer all the questions, go through all the individual courses. I'm sorry, I don't have the actual list of courses in front of me right now, uh, but keep looking on our website and we'll post it on, Black, on uh, Facebook and Instagram as well. And we will be or organizing lots of discovery days, just like this one, specific to the food studies degree in order to go through the program and answer questions for students. In the fall, we are going to start the program very small, I think only 24 students. Um, so I, I'm expecting it's gonna be high demand because there isn't another four years uh, honors just food studies degree right now in Canada University or uh, colleges. Um, but we'll make sure we give lots of opportunities to learn about it. Okay, thank you, Christine. Uh, and this seems to be the last question. So if anybody has more, please make sure you enter them in the chat now. Uh, so it seems to be that there's quite a few people here either interested in or who have accepted an offer for uh, the food and nutrition postgraduate. Uh, so Nassim has seen that uh, the program is supposed to be two semesters, but saw that it was three semesters, uh, m probably from a previous slide. So if you don't mind just uh, reviewing the structure of the program. The program is definitely two semesters, but it's a bit the the it's just a little bit longer than two semesters. So definitely, our programs start in September. That's semester one. The second semester is in January to April. Generally, students graduate from our one-year programs around the third week of April. But the food nutrition management program, the students go about another three weeks longer than that. Um, and that's because they do two placements and each of the placements I believe are three weeks long but they're 40 hours a week you don't come to school when you're doing your placement um, and so that does extend the program a little bit longer it is a postgraduate program because we expect students to have culinary experience um, where there are other programs that are diplomas that are the food and nutrition management but that's they do diplomas because they have um, culinary built into the programs so um, I'm going to actually speak to Lloyd Sudeiko because if there's a lot of people on this program, on this call today, that's uh, asking questions about that. Um, if you've already applied for the program, then you would have already spoken to Lloyd because he does interviews for the program. Um, but I know he also does an information session closer to August, so I'll speak to him to see if um, if you've applied. I'm assuming you've applied that uh, he can organize an information session towards the middle of August to answer specific questions about the program for you. Okay, thank you, Christine. And it looks like there's one more question from Gio. Uh, like, you know, what will I do if I don't have proper equipment in my kitchen? For example, an oven or a nice set. So that is quite clear on the website. In the fall, if you're going to start, you must have access to kitchens and equipment. Now, we're not asking you to go and buy the most expensive equipment, but you must have access to a stovetop, um, an oven, a fridge, and a freezer. If you go onto the website and you click on the individual programs, you should be able to find the link that it, that uh, goes to the specific equipment that you need. But it won't be it won't be appropriate for you to start in the fall if you don't have access to the basic cooking equipment, unfortunately. And if I can just touch on that too, um, with the exception of the oven, those expectations are the exact same if you're. Uh, attending the college live we do have um there's a certain level of a uh, number of pieces of equipment that are required uh, to be purchased in order to participate so it's not unique to the uh, the covid uh, learning okay thank you both uh, so it looks like that's the end of our question so thank you very much for answering all of them great thank you for attending everybody today we appreciate it Thank you. Have a great uh, weekend. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.